Well, according to our world in data on vaccinations, 9.21 billion COVID-19 vaccine doses have been administered worldwide, while 3.88 billion have been fully vaccinated. That's about 49.8% of the world's population. Now, of that figure, Nigeria has administered about 14.8 million doses and 4.48 million fully vaccinated. That's about 2.2% of the country's population. Well, to talk more about this, joining us, Dr. Yohe Akase, infectious diseases physician with the Lagos University Teaching Hospital, Luke. He joins us for more on the program. Welcome to the program. Thank you very much for having me. Let's talk vaccination drive in Nigeria. What's your observation? Yeah, I think, uh, like we've heard from the various states, um, I think the response has been uh, impressive. If you put into perspective the amount of hesitance that uh, we had, you know, in the past. Um, over the past few um, weeks, we've seen, um, you know, a lot of people have come up to take both first dose, second dose, and even a reasonable amount of people have also come for their booster doses. What is concerning, though, is the these figures as we're saying uh, an increase in figures? What a significant amount of it is made up of people who actually didn't get vaccinated, or who by you know by some you know way still got in their hands registered as being vaccinated. So I think it is something that is a big problem, and uh, that you know so the numbers are quite very good, but you know. Quite a significant number of people among those numbers got those cars, are registered as vaccinated, but have not actually received the job. So um, it, it's something that, you know, uh, why we're happy with the numbers, really it's something that uh, we should be concerned about. That yes, the numbers may look good, but we have people who have not received the job, but who, who have been recorded as being vaccinated. Yeah. So, you know, as much as you've observed that, there's also the case of people who say they attended or visited vaccination sites and there's a whole crowd. And so going back, uh, some of them are also discouraged. In such situation, um, what would you advise? Yeah, so I think that's where uh, there is need for governance. That's, that's, that, you know, that's sort of shortcoming of, you know, uh, mass vaccinations. You logistic challenges, you know, will come up. Um, what what the government needs to watch out for though is whether you know uh, you have staff who are creating artificial delays so people can accept the shortcut, you know, and uh, and get on with it. It's a responsibility of the primary healthcare boards at various states to make sure that you know it's easy for people to come in. They will arrange logistic, you know, the logistics such that people come and get their jobs, you know, and go home. Creating a you know you know crowd that vaccination site defeat the purpose. Number one. You know, it's an it's an easy area where you, people get you know exposed to one another and you know um, you know get infected and take that away. So it's the responsibility of primary healthcare boards, you know, at various states and even at, at you know, local government levels to schedule these things better. We see crowds of people coming around vaccination, you know, vaccinators uh, trying to get registered because you know that uh, the the model we're using in the country requires people first to be registered online. And that their records to reflect online before they actually go for the job. And I think that's where most of the delays occur. So um, I think it's the responsibility of the primary care board to make sure that this process is more seamless and people will spend less time, you know, getting vaccinated. What they do need to look out for, like I said, is to make sure that people are not creating artificial, you know, crews, uh, sorry, accused, you know, at this side so that people can, you know, accept the shortcuts and, uh, you know, go on with it. Because, like I said, I mean, if, if the numbers keep going up, but that particular avenue of people easily having access to shortcuts uh, where they don't get a job or get a cars and walk away, uh, that was serious, serious. And we've seen instances where people went elsewhere, they were, you know, checked for evidence of antibodies against the, the vaccine, and there was none. So really, it is, it, this is something, in as much as we're happy with the numbers, and I think the primary health care board has done a lot of work in working with people to overcome their hesitancy, their concerns and their fears, they do not need to, you know, now put on modalities in place so, to reduce the number of people who are bad. We saw this with yellow fever. We've seen this as well when people require documentation for travel. We've seen that people can, you know, try and, you know, bypass that process. But it mm. surely shows you the amount of work 
you know, they so need to do. It also speaks to, you know, people not also um, being convinced of the vaccine. I mean, just um, in the, his New Year message, the Lagos State Governor was appealing to residents to get vaccinated. Uh, in other parts of the country, you know, we've seen state governors, the other public servants taking the jabs, uh, the booster for everyone to see. Do you think that that drive, that technique has worked? May people want to take the vaccines, trust the vaccines enough to take them? Yeah, so I think, uh, you know, we have to employ a multimodal approach. Where, so that definitely is one way to go. Why we keep explaining to people, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, the benefits of that. And I think getting more public, uh, you know, people. And I think one thing that has, you know, countered a lot, especially caused a lot of resistance at the beginning with public figures who came up publicly, uh, you know, to question, you know, the, the, the motive or the benefits and, you know, support all other forms of, um, you, know, uh, you know, conspiracy theories. That really did play, you know, huge role in terms of discouraging people. So that's one, that public, you know, support for that. Also, I, I think, you know, um, it's clear that there are some people who, by virtue of their office, feel obliged to come out in public and say something. But these are people that have clicks and people who know them and who maybe in private will say, well, you know what, I don't believe. So I think, um, you know, the, the, we have to keep employing, you know, many modalities on, you know, encouraging people, you know, to come and get vaccinated. And, you know, you know, public officials coming out of public to do this is one way. While the public health authorities keep telling people that, you know what, COVID is here to stay. If you don't get vaccinated now or you're escaping, but you're getting affected in 2020, you're escaping in 2021. The COVID is here in 2022, if there, 2023, it will get, so eventually everybody would, would get exposed to COVID. And if you didn't get vaccinated or you're not going to get vaccinated on a rolling basis, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's not eventually meet up with everyone. Mm. Now, it's clear, it's, it's, it's uh, evidence for now seems to suggest that uh, we may be receiving vaccines on a, on a rolling basis. So people who missed their first two doses, I have evidence to show that we're vaccinated. When it's time to get a booster, they may go and get a booster, but everybody knows that the protection is not going to be good enough. We appreciate your time. Thank you so much, Dr. Ihoia Kase, is an infectious diseases physician with Luth. Thank you so much for joining us on the program. Thank you. Thank you.